2,000 years ago, the Roman army is the best equipped army in the world. While the architects have mastered the art of manipulating stone and concrete, military engineers have fashioned metal and wood to create devastating weapons of war. The Roman foot soldier's main weapon is a fearsome sword called a gladius, a double-edged blade about 18 inches long with a sharp point. It was used for stabbing and thrusting rather than slashing. But if a sword could be deadly at close quarters, their spear, called a pilum, could kill from a distance. It can be thrown with lethal accuracy around 100 feet. The pilum's designed basically to kill. It's designed to, to pierce people, to pierce armor, to pierce their shields. The pilum has a six foot long wooden shaft topped with a two foot long iron shank. The tip of the shank was triangular and would have been difficult to remove once it impaled the enemy. The drawback of any javelin type weapon is that the enemy may pick it up and throw it back. But Roman military scientists employ the latest metal-making technology to protect their men. The iron tip of the pilum is tempered through rapid heating and cooling, making it hard and strong. The shaft is untempered, leaving it soft. Striking a shield, the pilum's strong tip penetrates, but the soft shaft bends, making it useless for the enemy to throw it back at the Romans. Protecting your soldiers from injury is just as important as arming them for attack. Early Roman soldiers wear chain mail called lorica hamata, vertical rows of solid washer-like rings made from bronze or iron are linked to riveted rings that run horizontally. It does have its flaws, it is very heavy, weighing around 33 pounds. And enemy arrows can penetrate between the rings to injure the wearer. Weapons reconstruction expert Ben Giel studies the impact of Roman weapons. So it literally explodes through the links and makes its own way. Roman armorers come up with a far superior form of protection, articulated plate armor called lorica segmentata, made from a series of overlapping iron plates joined together by leather straps. It's as flexible as chainmail, but one third lighter. The protective shoulder and body pads worn by football players work in much the same way. The light segmented sections on the shoulders and chest allow movement, but spread the impact of a heavy blow around the body. The Lorica Segmentata is built to withstand an enemy arrow. Well, it went in only about that far. The arrow may have made a dent, but the armor saves its wearer from serious injury. And if the Romans' weaponry has a modern feel, then so do the tactics they use. Some can still be seen today on the streets of New York. January 31st, 2002. Facing demonstrations against the World Trade Organization, the New York police defend themselves with the latest body armor and high-tech protection. But this use of shields is remarkably similar to something 2,000 years ago. The Roman legions know exactly how to fight heavily armed foes. They use the testudo, Latin, for tortoise. Legionnaires bunch together and lock their shields in formation to create a large protective screen. A formation as effective in attack as it is in defense. The soldiers use a large curved shield, which is made from another modern sounding material, plywood. Plywood's very easy to make. You just take um, a few layers of wood and glue them together with the grain at 90 degrees to each other 
on the different layers. And that provides a protection that's fairly firm, um, but that is still a little bit flexible. And that's how um, they're able to produce these curved shields. Laminating the alternate layers at 90 degrees gives the shield its strength. Drop a marble on a thin sheet of wood and it breaks easily. Put two sheets together with the grains in the same direction and they still break. But cross the grains and the marble bounces off. But it isn't just the foot soldiers who have the high-tech equipment. The Romans can also wheel out the big guns. I think one of the things that impresses me most about Roman military technology is, is the artillery. Few examples of Roman artillery survive, but the Romans left detailed clues as to how to recreate them. Gilles is a member of the Ermin Street Guard, Britain's leading Roman reenactment group. He believes their recreations help us to understand how Roman technology worked. Before this was done, nobody really knew how these weapons and how this equipment worked. But just knowing how it was constructed doesn't really tell you how it was used. And, and that's why experimental archaeology like this is very important. This is the scorpion. It fires iron-tipped bolts. It was used in the first stages of attack and during sieges. It pierces armor and kills instantly. It's a bit like a giant crossbow. The rigid bow arms are cranked back, storing the energy in the two vertical skeins made of rope and sinew. Once the bowstring is released, it fires the arrow 1,200 feet at incredible speeds. This is the bolt. That will be placed here. When I release the bolt, you'll see that the wooden shaft underneath it also projects forward, and that acts very similar to the barrel of a gun, keeping the bolt as straight as possible when it leaves the weapon. As you can see, it's fully maneuverable. I then aim at a target, and when I'm happy to shoot at them, I will. Scorpion is a lethally effective weapon. They would have caused devastating injuries. There are skeletons of British people who were probably killed by the Romans when they invaded. There's one guy who had an arrow head through his spine, another guy who had a catapult bolt through his head, and it went through his skull about here. It must have killed him instantly. Although it's an effective anti-personnel weapon, the scorpion is of little use in attacking a building. For that, the Romans need something with a bit more punch. The onager and the ballista. I think the stone throwers are the most devastating piece of, of, of Roman technology. These pieces of artillery fire large stones at the enemy. During sieges, they propel projectiles so high into the air that they can break down enemy walls. The whizzing noise of the stones strikes terror into Rome's enemies. To increase the fear factor, they're painted black, so they're harder to see. It's very effective physically, but it's also a huge psychological weapon. Um, and enemies whom the Romans are fighting um, are really scared of this stuff. The ballista works like the scorpion, but is bigger and more powerful. It can fire a 60-pound stone forward, or a three-foot bolt around 1,500 feet, allowing the soldiers to stand well away from enemy archers. 
The speed of the missile is phenomenal, hitting its target at around 115 miles per hour. Anyone sustaining a direct hit would be killed instantly. The Onager uses a different principle. It catapults basketball-sized stones, weighing up to 50 pounds, nearly a thousand feet, using a single arm and sling. The vertical arm is powered by a large horizontal skein of rope, coiled and twisted to create a rotational force. The skein acts like a spring, storing energy to be released on firing. The more powerful the spring, the more powerful the catapult. The Romans use rope made from sinews because it's very springy and gives back an exceptionally high percentage of the energy stored in it. Each Roman legion would carry around 60 pieces of artillery. The combinations of technology and tactics makes the Roman army the premier fighting force in Europe for 500 years and influences military tactics for the next 1500.